Have you ever encountered something as enigmatic as the Ethiopian Bible? It's not very probable, it seems like something out of an adventure film, but it's real. La Biblia Ethiopi is one of the most enigmatic and debated books that exist. Even the country itself is shrouded in inexplicable mysteries, but that is a story for another time. Ethiopia is the corner of one of the oldest civilizations in the world and is the only country in Africa that escaped colonization. This allows them to trace their lineage back to ancient times, even being associated as descendants of one of Noah's sons. Although there are controversies, historical records strongly suggest this connection. However, the focus is not only on the country itself, but on the treasure it holds. The ancient scrolls of the Bible found in Ethiopia are more ancient than the most well-known versions like the King James Bible. With its 88 books, the Ethiopian Bible includes works that other Christian traditions do not recognize. It contains texts from both the Old Testament and the New Testament, as well as unpublished parchments. What is even more fascinating is that these scrolls have existed long before Christianity was officially established in the region. While Christianity spread throughout the world, it was rooted in Ethiopia since the 4th century. Ancient travelers and historians have testified to the Christian presence in Ethiopia since ancient times. Evidence suggests that for more than 3,500 years, certain Ethiopian tribes worshipped Christian God. During times, Ethiopia welcomed Christian refugees, offering them a safe home during times of religious persecution in other parts of the world. This is just a glimpse into the rich and complex religious history of this unique country. The oldest Christian organization in the world is not the Catholic ministry, as many might think, but the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, known locally as Tehuedo. Ethiopia also houses one of the first illustrated Christian books, part of the Evangels written in Ge'ez, an ancient Ethiopian language discovered in 2010 in a monastery on top of a mountain. According to a tradition that dates back to the 10th century BC, an Ethiopian ruler and the famous biblical queen of Saba traveled to Jerusalem to seek advice from King Solomon. However, the biblical account does not mention that the rulers had a son called Menelik. The reign of Saba took the boy back to Ethiopia, where he became the first emperor. In 2012, genetic analyzes carried out on Ethiopians found evidence that suggested a possible mixture with Egyptian, Israeli, or Syrian towns some 3,000 years ago, coinciding with the period in which the reign of Saba was said to have ruled, further strengthening this story. Despite its rich history and authenticity, the Ethiopian Bible is not recognized as part of the canon of sacred books and is generally unknown to the majority of people, including many followers of the faith. This highlights the effort to discredit and hide the Ethiopian Bible over time. Today, we understand that the Bible was not as we know it today. There were several versions and interpretations that reflected different understandings and ideas about its content. Initially written in Hebrew, the biblical texts were translated into several languages across the world. One of the first significant translations was carried out by San Geronimo, who converted the Hebrew text to Latin, resulting in the Vulgate published in the year 400. The Vulgate, with its 27 books of the New Testament and 39 of the Old Testament, became the main Latin version of the Bible. However, in the first chapter, many other writings about the life and teachings of Jesus appeared. Many of these writings were fictional, similar to novels or fan fiction based on the life of Jesus. The problem arose when these texts became available to the public, leading some people to believe that they were real reports. Without the digital verification resources we have today, fake news spread quickly, resulting in an infinity of fake books and confusion among people. The damage caused by this dissemination of inaccurate information was significant. This concern became central to the leaders of the early Christian church who met at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD and at the First Council of Constantinople in 381 AD to determine which books would be included in the New Testament. Strict criteria were established, 
a book would be considered sacred if it was written by one of Jesus' followers or by someone who witnessed his teachings. Furthermore, the text should have been written in the first siglo and be in harmony with the rest of the Bible. Throughout the siglos, the Holy Bible underwent several modifications, but one of the most significant occurred during the reign of King Jacob I. After 500 years of the Vulgate, there were still several versions and conflicting interpretations of the Bible. I am worried about the monarch, who wants a unified version of the Bible to resolve religious divergences and consolidate his power. Addressing these concerns, King Jacobo the Fervor hired 47 specialists to review all the different existing Bible translations. Divided into six groups, these specialists worked independently for seven years, following strict rules to avoid any gaps. They used several tools to produce a translation faithful to the original languages. The result was a scientific Bible that reflected the consensus of experts and met established criteria. In 1611, the King James Bible was published and, thanks to advances in printing, it became one of the most accessible versions until then. However, the additions made in the King James Bible and the original translation of the Vulgate by San Geronimo resulted in the exclusion of some books that the majority of Christians have today. The Ethiopian Bible keeps all the scriptures. Now that we have briefly explored the history of the Bible, it is time to address why the Ethiopian Bible was rejected. There are several reasons for this, but the main one is the inclusion of additional books known as pseudo-epigraphs. These are texts falsely attributed to authors who are not their true writers or whose authors were identified as figures from the past as works of fan fiction. These texts are considered non-canonical by most Christian traditions. The books that were eliminated or rejected were known by the scribes and theologians of the time as not being divinely inspired. Many of these works were written with bad intentions before and after Jesus. To avoid the spread of falsehoods in the future, these books were excluded from the canon. For example, if someone today wrote a book denying Pelé's misfortunes as an athlete, it would be rejected due to his falsehood. However, with time, these stories could become part of popular belief, which is why it is important to eradicate them now. The Ethiopian Bible has two canons, its breadth and its length. Before exploring this, it is important to define what is a canon. A canon is a principle or criterion generally accepted by which something is judged. In the religious context, a canon refers to the collection of texts considered authorized or sacred by a religious community. The Ethiopian Bible has distinct canons, the broadest and the narrowest. The broadest canon, widely recognized, consists of 81 books, including works such as Enoch, the Jubilees, the Three Books of Maccabean, the Epistle of Clement, the Four Books of the Synods, among others. This is the main focus of the video because it is the most well-known canon. On the other hand, the longest canon was established by Emperor Haile Selassie. It proclaimed this version as official and complete of the Ethiopian Bible. Although I am unable to provide details about the reason behind this decision, I suggest that you investigate for yourself to better understand this restricted version of the canon, which contains only 72 books, excluding some scriptures found in the larger version. It is important to note that the broader canon has not been reprinted since the beginning of the 20th century. The existence of two different versions of the canon contributes to controversy and may have been a factor in the widespread acceptance of the Ethiopian Bible. The Bible, unlike popular belief, is not just a book, but a collection of texts and experiences written over many years. This diversity is where challenges and questions arise around its interpretation and acceptance. Different religious groups, including recognized and accepted ones, have a long history of inclusion or exclusion of various texts or copies based on personal theological foundations. Something is judged, for example, if a channel has one screen, a country has a president, and a channel has more subscribers. In the religious context, 
a canon refers to the collection of texts considered authorized or sacred by a religious community. The Ethiopian Bible has two distinct canons, the broadest and the narrowest. The most widely recognized canon consists of 81 books, including works such as Enoch, the Jubilees, the Three Books of Mabes, the Epistle to Clement, Four Books of Codes, among others. This is the main focus of the video, as it is the most well-known canon. On the other hand, the longest canon was established by Emperor Haile Selassie, who proclaimed this version as official and complete of the Ethiopian Bible. Even though I can't provide details about the reason behind this decision, I suggest you investigate it yourself to understand better. This restricted version of the canon contains only 72 books, excluding some scriptures found in the larger version. It is important to note that the broader canon has not been reprinted since the beginning of the 20th century. The existence of two different versions of the canon contributes to controversy and could have been a factor in the widespread acceptance of the Ethiopian Bible. The Bible, contrary to popular belief, is not just a book, but a collection of texts and experiences written over many years. This diversity is where challenges and questions arise around its interpretation and acceptance. Different religious groups, including recognized and accepted ones, have a long history of inclusion or exclusion of various texts or copies based on personal theological foundations. For example, the Bible we know today was mainly compiled in Siglos IV and V. At that time, Christianity in Ethiopia began to diverge from Christianity in Europe and the Mediterranean, and this difference persists until today. The Ethiopian Bible has many similarities with the Catholic and Orthodox versions, although it includes some additional books from the Old Testament. These additional books were probably written in the last few years before Christ, at the end of the Old Testament era, but before the beginning of the New Testament. Furthermore, additional books will be added to the end of the New Testament, especially related to the history and structure of the Ethiopian Church. Another reason for the rejection of the Ethiopian Bible could be the language in which it is written, Jez, making access difficult for non-speakers. Furthermore, the lack of translations and unique practices of the Ethiopian Bible contributed to its relative obscurity in Ethiopia. The most controversial reason is politics. In the early days of Christianity, political power was a central concern for the Roman Empire. Hubo little spiritual growth and any parchment that did not align with the preferred story was long gone. Then, the Bishop of Rome instructed the priests to destroy parchments that were not in the Bible. However, many priests hid them in caves near the Dead Sea in the 1940s. Explaining the differences between two Bibles, in recent years there has been an increase in interest in the Ethiopian Bible, with people seeking to discover what it does. Special and the truth that it contains. The churches also work to make it more accessible, translating it into more languages and carrying out academic studies on it. It is impressive that this Bible has survived for so long, especially after attacks and fires, further increasing the mystery that surrounds it. Thank you for your attention and which remains beneath the grace of God. It's ready.